Hello guys, China Uncle Mackie here. For the majority of the Chinese nationals, visiting the Scandinavian countries is kind of mission impossible now, especially during the pandemic. The most of the Chinese citizens have no clue about the geographical location of the Nordic land on this planet. A lot of them don't even know what other countries are so-called the Scandinavian countries. It is not because of the northern part of Europe is physically far away from China, the so-called the Middle Kingdom in Asia. It is also because of the travel cost between Europe and China is pretty high for the majority of the Chinese middle class in that country. A 10 days trip in the Scandinavian countries might need 1 to 2 years of the savings in China. Especially in the recent years, when the social phenomenon called the involutionary hits the, the majority of the young couples in that country travel to the west tra or travel to the Scandinavian countries became a dream for the majority of them therefore from this perspective i am kind of lucky that i have the opportunity to see and experience the Scandinavian countries so today I'm going to talk about my first impression of Norway, one of the neighbor countries of Sweden. So there you go. to Norway before the pandemic when this planet was way better than it is now. There wasn't any worry about the risks of getting infected on the road and the masks are not required on the trip. We departed from Sweden to Copenhagen by train and then we took a flight from Copenhagen to Bergen in Norway. Actually the flight was just one hour but the whole trip from Sweden to Norway took us about 10 hours. It is only because the train system on the southern part of Sweden connected to Copenhagen is kind of annoying because a lot of delays during the trip and we experienced that. Surprisingly, the Swedes are quite chill when they facing to the delay of the train because we were a little bit hurried to catch the flight, we were a little bit, uh, you know, worried and, uh, you know, hectic. But for the majority of the Swedes, they seem uh, very calm and chill when they are facing to such kind of issues, actually. Well, if it is in China, then you probably will see the uncles and aunties, you know, get involved, or try to fight to the train company and bring up a lot of attentions in the public area. And then you will see like quarrels between uh, the companies and uh, those red guards, uh, middle aged uh, aunties and uncles in China. It's totally different. That was a bit surprise to me. Anyway, we arrived in Bergen. Actually, it was quite late, about 10 p.m. in the evening. But not surprisingly, just as similar as our home in Sweden, during the summertime, you know, it's getting dark quite late, about 11 p.m. or something. We stayed in a hotel called Scandic, which is quite well known in the Scandinavian countries, but the price of the hotel is kind of pricey and expensive for us, but we had a good time over there. My first impression of the city of Bergen was it's a quite clean and beautiful city. 
Forgive me by only using such kind of normal English words to describe my feeling of Belgium, but it is actually essential the truth and the real feeling when I was first stepping that city. Safety is also not a problem at all in Belgium. It is very safe over there. You should not worry anything about safety over there. The reason that I call it a clean city because of the purity and the cleanness of the air quality over there. Although, you know, back in uh, our home in Sweden, it is also very eco-friendly and environment protected place to live with. Uh, but the feeling of Bergen is kind of like leveled up the air quality over there than here in the southern part of Sweden. But you know, uh, I do really care about the air quality because um, I grew up in Shanghai uh, during the 90s. Personally, I experienced the, the most hectic and uh, polluted air uh, during the 90s. So I do really care about the air quality because um, a polluted air is kind of very harmful for the human biological body. Even though it is now uh, in Shanghai, the air quality is improved a lot and you do see um, sky blue during the summertime. But if you are going to visit Shanghai during the winter, when you first step out of the airplane, you can literally feel the smoggy uh, smell in the air and uh, for some weakened body, you will literally uh, meet some kind of sickness or you know, throat pain when you are in that environment. And uh, this is uh, quite annoying when every time when I get back to China during the winter time to celebrate the Chinese New Year, I usually got sick after several days. We actually just visited a small part of Bergen called Bricken and the Mountain Florian. The seaside or the waterfront is the most visited destination in Norway. It has a large collection of the red colorful wooden houses. Pretty impressive to me, but also kind of as similar as the Swedish wooden little houses back in Sweden. And then we took the cable car called Florian Bannon, if I spell it correctly, to the mountain of Florian. The views up on the mountain that you can overlook the whole Brigham area was really fabulous and the Norwegian forest on the mountain was also a big surprise for me. We had a simple meal in the Nordic style restaurant. The food was so-so, honestly, according to my Chinese standard. And later in the evening, we went off the mountain, had some kind of seafood in the fish market. It was very expensive, actually, to eat a very small dish of the spider crab over there. In the next day, we booked a tour called the Natschio of the fields from Belgium to Oslo. The tour contains of bus, ferry and the train with almost 7 hours on the road to see the natural beauty of Norway. The bus tour on the twisted mountain was tested the driving skills of the driver, but surely you see the mountainous and the greenish of Norway. The field tour was actually pretty as similar as the ferry tour in China, uh, such as Guilin and the Chongqing. But as you all know, in the field tour, in signal fields, there was no overcrowded, no super annoying aunties yelling and laughing all the time, but just enjoying the natural beauty. We had a rest in a small town called Fluem. It was a very well-maintained Norwegian town. We had some kind of tasty rice meal there. It was pretty surprised that Norwegians can cook rice well in that way. Feels weird, right? I expected half-cooked rice, actually. Then it was the train part of the tour. It was awesome views. The landscape changed from greenish mountains, waterfalls, to mass or interplanetary sceneries look like places which I had never seen before. So the last part of the trip was Oslo. 
But comparing with Belgian or the field tour, Oslo is kind of boring actually, according to my point of view. It is a city just as similar as the other Scandinavian countries, such as Stockholm, with crowded central railway station, busy traffic, busy business streets with bars and the restaurants. I know many young people might love it, but you know, Shanghai has more entertainment to sell, way diverse and fancy than Oslo. But still, we went to the Royal Palace, Arcus House Fortress, and the modern architecture opera house. It. I can't say it's not beautiful, but yeah, I'm kind of picky. It's not that impressive to have its own uniqueness, actually. So, to conclude, Norway is actually a very beautiful, nice, awesome, safety place to visit. If you just access the cities like what I did in Bergen or Oslo, you wouldn't find it very challenging because the Norwegian society is very civilized and uh, you wouldn't find any problems for yourself. And the majority of the Norwegians speak very well perfect English, so language barrier isn't almost there if you are from a English speaking countries like USA or Australia or UK. But the only challenge is the money. Everything is a bit overpriced. But you know, my wife Vera doesn't care about money in most of the cases. She just pick up the best part of the experience. Transportations are convenient. Trains and the trams are covered all over the places. Taxi was expensive. People are actually friendly over there in Norway. Yeah, so that's pretty much about my Norway trip experience. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully next year I will get another chance to get there. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.